We want to talk first of all about a cycle that I'm going to use as a way of teaching you guys what to do with this stuff that we just did. And we're going to go through this one slowly and then after that we pick up the pace. But I want you to see the application. I want you to see how I put my notes together so you can, you can learn this material as simply as you possibly can. Because if you begin to catch the concept, it really doesn't matter what area they ask you to, to prove something about, you're going to be able to think your way through it. And we're going to start with the sales cycle. Now, when I talk about a cycle, a cycle normally starts at a point, goes all the way around and comes back to that point. And the reason I'm going to talk about the cycle is we need to see the cycle for the purpose of internal control. But when they give you the audit and they say, I want you to audit this, normally they say, you know, how do you prove accounts receivable exist? How do you prove this happened? How do you prove that? And they pick an account within the cycle. See, so we're going to do it both ways. We're going to talk about the cycle, but then when we start to gather evidence, we're going to do it for specific accounts within that cycle. So what I normally like to start with is this. In my handout, I normally give you what documents would, would this cycle produce, what would be some of the problems that you would encounter in this cycle that make it unique, what would good internal control look like in this cycle, and then what audit steps would you do, what procedures. Now keep in mind that I've already thrown out the I see a TV MC sir. Some of those I'll repeat, but I want you to understand as we take a look at the substantive test, I don't put down every single one because things like get a rep letter, look for subsequent events, you know, those kinds of things, if they're pretty universal, I don't mention them again. You've got to realize they were still there. You know, vouching, tracing, you know, all that stuff. I pick some of those that are unique because that's what they like to test. What makes this cycle unique from inventory, you know, or any other cycle? And they, we have to understand it. So what I'm going to do to teach you is this. We're going to kind of shape this, this, the notes a little differently from the standpoint of just pedagogically getting you through it. And then after that, you'll see me go back to my normal format as we do it. So why don't we begin with this process? If you look in my notes, I have given you, first of all, good system of internal control, theoretically, for the CPA exam. And we're going to go back to remember the concept on internal control. Good segregation of duties. Proper documentation. You know, limiting accessibility and proper documentation is using pre-numbered documents and reconciling those documents. All of those are part of it. So we want to set up a system. And I'm going to draw this out for you, and I'd like you to do the same thing. I'd like for you to take some notes as we do this so that you can write it down and begin to see it for yourself. So as we begin to take individual questions that will be on the exam, you can kind of see where you are within the flow of this thing and what the critical points are in it. So let me give you a, a little picture of what this thing should look like if we have good internal control over the sales cycle. Now when it starts, all right, and this is again theoretical for the exam, I'm going to put the department up here, sales department. Okay, These people, and I'll put a little E above it, are executors. You remember our, you remember our circles, right? These are executors. These people execute transactions. You say, wait a minute, they weren't authorized. Hang with me. They don't always go in order. The salespeople have one function. They are to sell the inventory. They're to sell the product. They're to sell whatever, the service, etc. We're using a product right here. Okay? So they take an order. So we can call this first document a sales order. Now normally, and I'll abbreviate this from now on, SO, okay? So you will just see that abbreviation. Now, the salespeople simply say, we sell. But I don't trust them when they sell to be concerned about collectability. <laughs> yeah, I just know that they love to sell. They get commissions. They get paid based upon sales. So I let them execute transactions, but not without proper authorization. Now, when they take the order, normally they're just writing down, what do you want, what quantity, what description, etc. And then they begin to put that order into the process. Well, the next process is the credit department. And I'll leave off department here and just put credit. Now, the credit department is an authorization function. So what do we do? We send the sales order, and I'm abbreviating, and their job is to approve it or to disapprove it. So they check the credit rating. Is this an existing customer? 
You know, how, how much are they into us now? Do they have any extra room for extending more credit? Or is their credit account up to snuff? You know, whatever. They're looking at an existing client. If it's a new customer, do we need to run a credit report? Because you see, somebody has to keep check over the, over the executors of the order. And so their job is authorization. And if, if they don't approve it, that order's dead. So you've got to start with an order. The customer has to place the order. But now we have to get the credit approved. People who approve credit don't sell. People who sell don't approve credit. Well, what happens after that? Well, if once it's approved, it goes out to the warehouse. And out in the warehouse are people who have physical custody of inventory. And so they take the approved, and I'm really abbreviating now, sales order, and they fill the order. Now notice, they should not fill the order unless it's been properly approved, right, by the credit department. They look on the document, okay, they look on that sales order, they should see a signature from someone in credit. And that gives them the authority to then fill the order. Well, could... Could they make a mistake? And yes, they could. So we have another custodial function called shipping. That's also a custody function. And it goes over to shipping, and they get the approved sales order, and they prepare the second document called a bill of lading. Packing slip, shipping instructions, whatever you want to call it. And they log it in. Now, this thing is pre-numbered, is it not? And they go into their computer, and they can then log it in, right? Log in shipment. And their job is to check to see if they fill the order properly, box it up, and then ship it. Record the fact that it was shipped, how they shipped it, when it should arrive, who's paying the freight, you know, all the details, they've got it all logged in. Okay? Okay? 